Then we move to the last part of the theory of that is marginal utility approach explained by Professor A. C. Pigou. That is that here there is a two important <coughs> two important concept here. One is that what about the usefulness of this theory or what about the merits of this theory? And second is that what about the demerits or which are the problems existed in the marginal utility approach? First what about the merit or usefulness of this theory the first important merit it shows that that is this theory is extended to expenditure and revenue sides of the budget that is this is extended to the expenditure and revenue sides of the budget so not only to the revenue side at the same time expenditure side of the budget that is easily determined with the help of marginal utility approach. This is the important merit of marginal utility approach. Then we move to what about the demerits or difficulties of the marginal utility approach. The first is that here there is a problem of aggregating individual preference to social preference. It is not solved in the case of marginal utility approach. That is here there is a problem existing to aggregate individual preference to social preference. This is not solved. That is individual preference or that preferences. That is preferences revealed by the individual. This is revealed with the help of price mechanism or market mechanism. But aggregation of individual preferences that is equal to social preference. But their preference is not to solve with the help of marginal utility approach. That is aggregating individual preference to social preference problem. This is not to solve in the case of marginal utility approach. And second is that here there is an absence of effective means to quantify utility and disutilities. That is it is very difficult to quantify or measure effective means of utility and disutility. How to calculate utility and disutility? That is disutility and utility. That is in the case of utility, this is obtained from because of the benefit enjoyed by the community. But in the case of disutility, that is represented as because of taxation, how much sacrifice involved among the individual. Both concepts, this is quantitative measurement is not possible. That is known as absence of effective means to quantify utility and uh, disutility. Yes. Difficulty to measure that is utility and uh, disutility in quantitative manner. These are the two important problems or two important difficulties faced in the case of marginal utility approach. Because of this problem, now we suggest the second important approach. That is, in the case of, that it to explain the pure theory of public expenditure. There are three important approach here. What is that? Marginal utility approach plus Second is that voluntary exchange approach and third is that Sam Wilson approach. In the case of first approach that is based on ability to pay theory, this is refined by Professor A.C. Pigou. Now we move to the next approach that is equal to voluntary exchange approach. Now we move to the second approach that is equal to voluntary exchange approach. What is the relevance of voluntary exchange approach here? That is, in the case of provision of private good according to the system of price or that is price system or price mechanism, that is the provision of private good. In the same way, it is very difficult to measure that is how to distribute or how to provide public goods. So, that is purchasing of private good or that is private goods sold with the help of price mechanism or market mechanism such a pricing system is not possible in the case of public goods provision or provision of public goods in that context here there is so many problems emerge how to solve this problem 
this problem is that that public good which are jointly consumed jointly consumed nature of public good the pricing system is not possible in the case of the provision of public good but the case of provision of public good that's sorry the provision of private good is possible because of the existence of price mechanism price mechanism that is equal to the forces of demand and supply it can determine price mechanism this is not possible the provision or distribution of public goods because of the existence of jointly consumption nature of public good so based on this there are so many problems or difficulties existed here to solve that in that cases there are to solve this difficulties there are so many attempts made by this so many attempts made by the economists like the first here there is a eric lintal and second is that this attempts that is in the case of the theory developed by Johnson and Bohm and third is that recent theory formulated by Samuelson and Muskie that is the question is that because of the problem in the provision of public good if there are so many attempts made by here there is a era of economics or here there is a line of economics here one is that Eric Linta he provided a clear statement of the pure theory of public expenditure or that is optimal allocation of public goods or here there is a optimal de determination of the theory of public expenditure optimal distribution of the theory of public expenditure but that is optimal allocation of public good or optimal determination of the theory of public expenditure so in that case the last that is pure theory of public expenditure introduced by that is samuelson this is the last picture here so before this here there is a voluntary exchange model first the clear statement provided by eric lindahl he is a swedish that is swedish economist eric lindahl l i n d a h l eric lindahl second it developed by the two important economists that is johnson and bowen and the recent development created of that is the optimal allocation of the public good or here there is a optimal determination of the theory of public expenditure provided by that is the recent economist that is known as samuelson and muskie which are the important then we start that what about the role of price mechanism in the case of the private and public goods so in the case of the private good the result that is the these goods are provided or provision of private good based on the price mechanism but in the case of the provision of public good this is not possible in the case of the price mechanism how these goods are distributed these goods are distributed according to the tax system that is the provision or the purchasing of public goods through the level of taxation thus individual can purchase private good through price mechanism in the same way individual can buy that they can purchase public goods through the level of taxation thus individual consumer or individual is defined as tax payer buyer why it is known as tax payer buyer tax payer shows that that he purchased the public goods through the level of taxation that is equal to tax payer then buyer means that is he can purchasing the private good through the price mechanism that is equal to tax payer buyer system thus here there is a problem for the that is problem existed in the distribution of public good it solved a certain extent with the help of that clear statement provided by eric lindahl and developed by johnson and bowen and recent theory explained by musgrave and samuels samuels and musgrave so voluntary exchange that exchange means buying and selling 
അപ്പം ഇൻ ദ കേസ് ഓഫ് ബൈ മീൻസ് പർച്ചേസിംഗ് ഓഫ് പബ്ലിക് ഗുഡ്സ് വിത്ത് ദ ഹെൽപ്പ് ഓഫ് ടാക്സ് ഓർ ത്രൂ ദ ലെവൽ ഓഫ് ടാക്സ് ആൻഡ് ദ പർച്ചേസിംഗ് ഓഫ് പ്രൈവറ്റ് ഗുഡ് വിത്ത് ദ ഹെൽപ്പ് ഓഫ് ദാറ്റ് സോറി വിത്ത് ദ ഹെൽപ്പ് ഓഫ് പ്രൈസ് സിസ്റ്റം ഓർ മാർക്കറ്റ് മെക്കാനിസം ദസ് ദാറ്റ് ഹിയർ ദർ ഇസ് എ പ്രൊവിഷൻ ഓഫ് പബ്ലിക് ഗുഡ് ആൻഡ് പ്രൈവറ്റ് ഗുഡ് ദിസ് കാൻ solve with the that's solve here there is a existence existence of problem existed in the public good solve with the help of the end there is entry or the existence of the voluntary exchange system there is voluntary exchange approach it can solve here there is a problem existed in the provision of the public good through the introduction of tax system that is equal to the voluntary exchange approach this is explained with the help of a figure importance of the voluntary exchange theory in the case of voluntary exchange theory explained by that is these two economists that is eric lindard johnson and sweet that is another economist bow that is the first a clear statement provided by voluntary exchange theory that is eric lindard so here there is a the theory that is optimal determination of the theory of public expenditure or optimum allocation of public goods both are the correct here there is a optimum allocation of public good it is explained how to determine the optimum allocation of public good with the help of a figure in this ox axis represent as here there is a public good named as z that is the quantity of public good on the ox axis and oy axis represent as the price or the cost of the public good set so z is the public goods its cost on oy axis and its demand on the ox axis then here there is a three individual buyers individual buyers or they are the individual consumers or they are the tax payers all are the same that is in the case of voluntary exchange model that is he explain as tax payer buyer buyer in the context of purchasing private good and in the case of tax payer represent as the purchasing public goods so in that case consumer individual consumer is named as tax payer and buyer so here there is a three individual consumers or three individual tax payers they are a b c so a b and c are the three individual buyers or individual consumers or tax buyers then curve dd dd represent as aggregated demand curve curve d represent as the aggregated demand curve then here there is a nrt <coughs> so these are the fr represent as sorry so here there is a n r t these are the three important intersecting point of aggregate demand curve that is aggregate demand f s line horizontal line f s represent as aggregate supply curve once more here there is a dd represent as that is a curve like this then there are three intersecting point like n r t these are belong to the line line that is not line curve dd this is the aggregated demand curve that is n r t are the three intersecting points then here there is a f s is the aggregated supply curve to determine optimal allocation of the public goods here there is a intersecting point of aggregate demand and aggregate supply aggregate demand and aggregate supply aggregate demand represent as that is the curve dd and aggregate supply that is represent as the line fs both are intersecting at a point r point r represent as optimum allocation of the public goods then optimum allocation of public good that is the intersecting point of f s and d d at that point oq2 quantity are demanded 
public good demand that's allocation of the public good at OQ2. OQ2 is the optimal allocation of the public good or this is the demand created by the individual consumers. Then here there is a three demand curves of that's individual consumers A and B and C. Individual consumers are represented as A, B, C. The difference is that individual A, individual B and individual C these three are demanded the same quantity that is same quantity of public good what is the quantity here quantity is represented as OQ2 quantity OQ2 quantity purchased by individual consumer individual A plus individual B plus individual C these are the three consumers they are demanding same quantity the difference is that they are ready to provide that is different prices that is they are purchasing the same quantity at uh, different prices that is in the case of OPA that is the point OPA this is the optimal quantity purchased by individual B at uh, OPA price that is quantity is that OQ2 individual A is ready to provide OPA price at to this price he is ready to provide but in the case of o that is oq2 quantity purchased by individual consumer c only opc price this price is represented as opc opc is the price which is contributed by the individual consumer c but he is purchasing the same quantity as oq2 that's OQ2 quantity purchased by individual consumer C as the price is equal to OPC. In the same way, at OPB price, individual consumer B, he is purchasing OPB, that's OPB price, the quantity is represented as OQ2. It is show that the same quantity purchased by individual consumers at a different price. Then these three a, B, C. They are belong to the same. In the case of OQ, it is the, the same quantity at a different prices. That is the price in the form of OPC by individual consumer C, OPB by individual consumer B, and OPA, that is the individual consumer A. And their quantity is the same OQ2. Then, here there is a aggregate demand and aggregate supply intersecting at a point and DD is the aggregate demand and F is the aggregate supply. So this is the point of optimal allocation. And another is that if there is a OQ1 quantity, OQ1 quantity of public good, this is at price is that NQ1. NQ1 is the price that is in the case of the aggregate demand curve that is point N, this price OQ1 quantity. This is point known as here. That is, this is the under allocation. That is, this is all that is optimal allocation OQ2. But this is less than OQ2. So OQ1 quantity of public good they are purchased at the NQ1 cost. So this is known as they are the under allocation because this is less than OQ2. Then another point is that OQ3. OQ3 represent as that is here there is a quantity of public good greater than Q2 OQ3 then intersecting point of demand and supply curve that is demand and supply curve at point D here there is a D in that cases here there is a their price is D Q3 and their quantity is OQ3 OQ3 quantity at a DQ3 prices. Q3 D is the price and OQ3. The difference is that quantity supplied Q3 greater than Q2. That is, they are over allocation. That is, Q2 is the optimal allocation. Q1 is the under allocation. Upon one is under allocation, that is Q1. Its price is N. And at the same time, R is the, that is optimal point, then T 
is the not D. D is the demand curve. Sorry. This is D is the demand curve. T, that is, T is the point here. T is the intersecting point here, T. This is known as OQ3, that is OQ3 quantity at a TQ3 price. Price is that TQ3 price. So, it is show that quantity which is greater than OQ2, they are known as over allocation. Then OQ1 represent as this is less than OQ2, that is under allocation. Their intersecting point are N, R, then T. NRT is the intersecting point, aggregate demand and the individual supply curve here. Then FS is the aggregated supply curve. Then here three demand curve like A, A, then C, C and B, B are the three individual demand here. So this is known as the optimum allocation. That is voluntary exchange theory or voluntary exchange approach explained by Linda is that optimum allocation is the best point. That's optimum allocation of public good. That is equal to the, here there is an optimal determination of the public expenditure. That is equal to here. Less than R that is equal to under allocation and more than R represent as the over allocation. The difference is that individual consumer A, B and C, they are ready to purchase at that's ready to purchase at a different prices, but they are purchasing at the same quantity. Same quantity at different prices are offered by or they are ready to provide different prices for the same quantity according to the individual consumer A, B and C. This is explained with the help of voluntary exchange theory. That is known as optimum allocation theory or optimum allocation approach or here there is a there is optimal determination of the public expenditure. These are the main points here. So Eric Lindan explained here. Then he explained with the help of taxpayer buyer. Taxpayer means that that is he is purchasing that is public goods with the help of or through the tax system. Then he is ready to purchase private good with the help of price or market mechanism. Thus taxpayer and buyer is the principle explained by Eric Lindahl with the help of voluntary exchange approach. That is known as the optimum allocation. Thus, this is the best principle compared to the marginal utility approach here. This is the second approach. And third is that what is meant by Samuelson approach. Through the taxpayer, buyer show that buyer means private good purchased by that's private good or semi or quasi private good purchased with the help of price mechanism or price system in the same way public good or quasi public goods purchased by with the help of tax system through the voting purpose or political process. These are the main important components are explained by Eric Lindahl Polandary Exchange. Hello dear students, you have Clarification, Madam,